Hello and welcome to Cards by Kendra. Today I'm sharing a glow-in-the-dark slimline card I made featuring the Gnome Trick or Treat digital stamp from Whimsy Stamps. This card is part of the Team Tiny Halloween Hop, so if you click on the hashtag in the description box, you'll be able to find all the videos from other creators participating in the hop. So I printed the digital image that I purchased from Whimsy Stamps on a sheet of 80 pound Nina Solar White cardstock. I knew I wanted to make a slimline card using my new slimline builder dies from Whimsy Stamps, so I just trimmed two inches off of each side using my paper trimmer so I could run it through my die cutting machine. I've also printed the digital stamp on a piece of masking paper and I've cut it out using my brother's scan and cut machine. I peeled off the backing of the masking paper and went ahead and attached it on top of the gnome. This is so I can work on the background without getting any distress oxide ink on my digital image. Now I've had this Tim Holtz mini stencil that looks like cobblestone for a while now and I've never used it so I thought this would be the perfect chance since my gnome is right in the middle of the page and I needed something for the bottom half of this scene. I tested out different color combinations on a scrap piece of paper before putting it on my card. I needed to create a walkway, so I'm just cutting this out with my scissors and my paper trimmer to create a mask so that I could ink up the sides with black soot Distress Oxide ink. Distress Oxide inks are my favorite inks to blend with, by the way. I'm using the Scene Maker stencil from Simon Hurley to create the grass. So I'm using my favorite ink blending tool, which is the domed foam applicators from scrapbook.com. Now for the reveal. So now that I have my walkway, I decided to go with the shabby shutters for the underneath part of the cobblestone, since it kind of resembles the color of moss. Um, but then I realized I might accidentally get some of this on the black. So I decided to mask off the black soot with the masking paper that I cut out earlier so that I could work on my walkway. Okay, so I um, struggled a little bit trying to get the backing off of these cut pieces of masking paper. Um, I really love the 8.5 by 11 size, but I noticed that they're out of stock on simonsstamp.com. So I'm hoping that they come back in soon. But here I've just laid my stencil over the top, and I went a little heavy-handed on this weathered wood. I probably should have dabbed it off on my glass mat first because you can't really see the lines on the cobblestone very much, especially at the top. But I figured out a way to kind of cover that up and I'll show you that here in just a second. So now I'm just removing my masks and I've got my walkway done and it's time to work on the top. So real quick, I wanted to mention these awesome foam storage sheets from my friend Sierra with CRT Designs. All I did was print them out on cardstock, ran them through my laminator and put on some Velcro circles and they're great for holding all the different colors of the foam applicators for the different Distress Oxide inks. I'm putting a link to her website down in the description box below along with a list of all the other supplies that I'm using to make my card today. So now I've inked up my applicator with Twisted Citron and um, next I'm adding Peacock Feathers and then for the top I am adding Blueprint Sketch. So while I'm going through the ink blending process, I'll tell you a little bit about the Team Tiny Facebook group. We're a group of crafters who all have YouTube channels with less than a thousand subscribers. So we work together to create ad-free crafting videos by having video hops each month, which helps us to grow our channels. We've grown quite a bit, so we just recently started doing several hops per month so that everybody can have a chance to participate. It's a great group of very talented people, so I hope you hop along with us and check out the other channels. If you're a crafter and you also have a YouTube channel, look us up on Facebook. It's called Team Tiny. So back to my card, I just keep going over each of these colors until I'm happy with the blend. I had to go back over my black soot areas again because the grass wasn't as prominent as I wanted it to be. Then I remembered that I had these journal stencils with some long grass blades on it, so I took my detailed blending tool and I applied it over the sides of the walkway. And there were also a couple of white spots around the tops of the black grass blades, so I used the other end of the tool to add some more Twisted Citron. I continued to add the longer grass blades all over and it definitely helped the overall look.
This same particular journal stencil happened to have a bat on it. So I added that next to where the moon will be. And because I had applied too much weathered wood down at the bottom toward the top, I just decided to add a little black cat down there too. Now, because I don't have any circle stencils, I decided to create my own using a two inch circle punch and a small sheet of clear acetate in order to create my moon. I used some texture paste. This is the opaque matte texture paste and I mixed in some Nouveau Glow Drops, which are supposed to glow in the dark, which we're gonna test out here shortly. This is the banana split color. Made sure I mixed it really well and then I applied it to my background using my spatula. So I had to mix a little bit more because I wanted to make sure that the moon was thick enough and that it still had some texture. And um, I almost messed up there. I should have tacked my stencil down to my glass mat, but I didn't. But I let this dry overnight and it actually turned out really cool looking. Um, now it's time to remove my mask and begin the coloring. But as you can see here, I'm having a little trouble getting that mask off of there. I think it was because I had applied a lot of Distress Oxide ink. Um, but luckily I have that handy tool. It's tweezers and a spatula with a sharp edge, but I've had it so long that I have no idea where I got it, but I use it all the time. So if anybody knows where you can find these things nowadays, please let me know in the comments. So I'm using Copic markers to color my gnome. I started with this tiny little face and nose. I began with the darkest of my skin tone colors, which was E55. And then I added E53, E51, and a little bit of E00. I added these to his hands as well. And then next I'm coloring his beard. I'm using C3 to start out with, and I ran it underneath his hat to create the shadow, and then all along the edge of his beard. I also traced the beard lines on the inside and continued drawing them down to connect them to the bottom. So I'm using a flicking technique so that it looks like hair strands, but I have to turn my card around in order to do this because it's easier for me to flick away from me than it is toward me. And then the next color I use C1, which is a little bit lighter, and I use that same flicking technique, and then I ended up blending it all in with C0, which is my lightest color. So I've sped up the video for this process. I wanted to show you my coloring though because I'm new to coloring with Copic markers, but I will tell you that the classes at Kit and Clowder have helped me so much. And I kind of wanted to explain what I was doing here because it's all about where your light source is and blending your markers together. And I've, I've just learned a lot. I can't say enough good things about the Kit and Clowder classes. But anyway, I am working with the hat. I've started with my darkest purple color, which was V17, and I'm tracing the outline of the hat and drawing a shadow to form a rim. I'm blending it slightly toward the center on each side. And since the moon is my light source directly above him, I wanted to highlight the center of the hat using my lightest colors. So I have to get lighter as I work toward the middle. Now I know a lot of people start with the lightest color first and that's actually what I did before I started taking these classes but I found out that you use less ink doing it this way and to me I'm happier with my blends. They, they seem to look more realistic. I used V17 along the bottom of his robe and then I blended that upward using V15. I ended up using V17 inside of his sleeve because that's supposed to be darker and then the lighter shade for the outer part. Um, and then that's when I noticed there's a little section between the sign and his head that needed to be green, but I ended up fix fixing that here in just a minute. But I did wanna mention y'all, I'm super proud of myself. This video was over 45 minutes long and I was able to edit it down to less than 15 minutes and I was able to keep the coloring in. So, but I did wanna share with you the coloring process. So now I'm coloring my pumpkin and this time I actually did start with lightest and worked my way to darkest. I started with YR02 and then I added YR04 and YR07. 
So I know Copic markers are expensive, but when you're choosing colors to blend, it's best to have a minimum of three markers, one from each of the different sections. So you've got a highlight color, which are Copic markers ending between zero and three. You've got a mid-tone, which are they end between four and six, and then a shadow, which are your darkest colors that end between seven and nine. This was something that I learned from the Kit and Clouder classes, and I thought it was some great information. So now, uh, when I removed that mask earlier, I removed part of the little pumpkin face, so I had to draw it back on with my black Copic marker, and then I had to color in part of his beard that was showing through his hand. But now I am moving on to the sign. The um, sign I decided to color it in yellow because I wanted to be able to add some of that glow in the dark Nouveau drops to the sign as well. So I first started with um, the Y17, which is my darkest yellow. I added that along the edges and then I added Y13 and Y11 toward the center. Um, my Y15 marker, for some reason, I think it's, it's something's wrong with it. I've got to refill it. Um, but that's why I didn't end up using that as my mid-tone. But I used Y17, Y13, and Y11. And then I used C7 for his shoes. I um, just put the darker color toward the bottom. And then I used C0 for the top. And then I ended up adding the colorless blender to the skull. When I was coloring this with my Distress, Distress Oxide inks earlier, um, the, sc the skull kept flipping up on me. So it's got a little bit of a green tint to it, but that's okay. I thought I'd add a little bit of this colorless blender just to see if it might take away some of the Distress Oxide ink color, which it didn't, but that's fine. I ended up going over it with some Nouveau Crystal Drops later anyway. But let me tell you, the YG, what was that? YG03, hold on, let me look. YG01 is the exact same color as Twisted Citron. It matches perfectly. So that's what I ended up fixing that with. Okay, so this is really sped up. So for my card base, I've taken a piece of teal colored cardstock from the Recollections Heavyweight 110 pound ocean paper pack from Michaels, and I trimmed it down to seven inches so that I have a seven by eight and a half inch piece. I scored it down the center at three and a half inches to create my slimline card base. I've used my bone folder several times to make sure that I get a good crease so it will lay flat, and then I glued down the card front using Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive, which is my favorite liquid glue. I have taken my black Copic marker and colored over the black cat and the bat so that it stands out a little more. And then I've covered my sign with the Nouveau Glow in the Dark Drops. And then I added the Nouveau Crystal Drops and Morning Dew over the skull and the pumpkin. So the Nouveau Crystal Drops, it um, actually dries clear, so it'll just give them some gloss and dimension. So some glossy accents would also work for this part. So next I added some stars to my sky using Dilution Shimmer Spray in white. I took the sprayer nozzle out of the bottle and just added a few drops to my glass mat. I covered up the bottom part of my card with scrap paper so I don't mess it up and then I took a paintbrush, I dipped it in the shimmer spray and flicked it onto the card using an acrylic block. You could use the same technique with acrylic paint to create the same effect. But I probably should have done this step before gluing it down onto my card base because it was definitely an afterthought. I got some drops on my moon and on the edges, but I wiped it away with my microfiber cloth and my fingers. Now for the finishing touches, I added some colored rhinestones all over the background to match. So blue for the top, teal for the middle, and green for the bottom. And then this finishes up my card for the day. I hope you like it. And now it's time to test out my glow in the dark moon and sign. So we're gonna turn out the lights. I couldn't really get a great picture of this, but it does glow, yay! So I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making this card. Please let me know what you think down in the comments below. Don't forget to check out the other creators participating in the hop today by clicking on the hashtag in the, in the description box below. It'll give you a list of all the videos that are part of this Teen Tiny Hop. For other card making inspiration, visit me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Cards by Kendra. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I can't wait to see you again on the next video. I'd love to have you come back, so if you haven't already, click on that subscribe button down below. I'll see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.